Hello children. Good morning. How are you? How are you doing? I hope you are doing very well. Dear students, today class, the third chapter, Rocks and Minerals. Dear students, in previous classes, we have completed what are rocks, types of rocks, types of igneous rocks and types of sedimentary and metamorphic rocks. Now, in this class, we will learn about minerals. What are minerals and types of minerals? So, children, today we are going to learn about minerals and a types of minerals with some example. Let's start. First of all, what are minerals? Minerals are the naturally occurring chemical substance which may have a simple or a complex form. They are formed due to natural process within the earth. Minerals are natural substance that are found in solid state. They occur in nature either on or below the surface of the earth. Sea salt is a mineral that occurs on the surface of the earth whereas diamond is a mineral that occurs below the surface of the earth. Dear students, minerals. What are minerals? As we know, rocks are made up of minerals. Some minerals found in rocks are metallic and some are non-metallics not made by humans okay minerals can be of two types metallic minerals and non-metallic minerals let us have a look on them these two minerals in detail so first is metallic minerals the minerals from which useful metals can be extracted are called metallic minerals they are dug out from mines and process obtained from matter they continued okay now let's see some examples of metallic minerals okay dear students some useful metals can be profitably obtained from metallic minerals called ores such as hematite bauxite pyrite and calamine we get iron aluminium copper and zinc respectively from these ores let us see some uses of metals. Iron is used for making machines and tools, vehicles, bridges, etc. Copper and aluminium are used for making electrical wires. And gold and silver and precious metals and they used to make jewelry. Dear students, these metals are commonly used for making utensils, machines, furniture wise, coins and coaches of friends and aeroplanes. Precious metal like gold, silver and platinum are used for making jewelry. Next one is non-metallic minerals. Non-metallic minerals. The minerals resource which do not contain metals are called non-metallic minerals. Dear students, fossil fuels such as coal and petroleum are valuable underground resources. They contribute greatly to our total energy supply. Dear students, some examples of non-metallic minerals, coal and petroleum. Coal and petroleum, these are dug out of air from deep underground mines or wells. Let us learn about them. So, first is coal. Coal is from the remains of plants and other vegetation that live millions of years ago. Dear students, coal is one of the most valuable minerals stored in the earth. It has been used as the fuel. For 100 years, millions of years ago, land was low-lying and covered with thick swampy forest. As plants died, they fell into the swamp and began to decay. New vegetation pressed the dead plants to the bottom. Due to extreme pressure, the vegetable matter changed into coal. Dear student, coal and petroleum, these are dug out of the air from deep underground mines are well. Let us learn more about them. So, first is coal. 
Coal is formed in the remains of plants and other vegetation that live in million of years ago. You can see in the picture, these are these there is a dry tree and they get covered with layers of sediments like stones, sand, etc. And dear students, after many years, these decay trees and plants convert into poisons and when get extreme heat fossils and when get extreme heat and pressure they convert into coal now i hope you understand how form is coal a doing plants and dense forest got buried under the morsi region and start to decay decay with the time sand and some other sediments cover them over the years Extreme heat and pressure convert them into coal. In India, coal mines are situated in Singrali, Madhya Pradesh, Tolcher, Odisha, Raniganj, West Bengal, Niveli, Tamil Nadu, and Singrani, Telangana. Dear students, coal is used as a fuel for cooking, for heating homes and buildings, and for producing electricity in power plants and in plants furnaces in the steel industry these students so next is petroleum half of the energy used in the world today comes from petroleum petroleum or crude oil has several names like rock oil black gold and liquid sunlight this is formed from the dead remains of ancient land and sea creatures millions of years ago the dead remain of these living things got buried in layers and gradually changed into oil and gas dear students petroleum or crude oil has several names like rock oil fossil fuels black gold and liquid sunlight now let's see how petroleum for see the picture this how petroleum the main use of petroleum is is as fuel in different forms we get lpc cng petroleum diesel and kerosene from petroleum dear students first of all how is form petroleum petroleum form the students how is petrol how is petroleum form this is form from the dead remains of ancient land and sea creatures millions of years ago that remains of these living things got buried in layers and gradually changed into oil and gas in india petroleum is obtained from ankleshwar gujarat digboy assam and mumbai high of the mumbai coast the main uses of petroleum is as fuel in different forms it is also used for dry cleaning making lubricating oil printing ink and medicine for a fin wax obtained from it is used to make candles waterproof curtains and polish dear students so students these are some petroleum products what are they nylon nail polish shoe polish plastic articles fertilizers medicine paint candles lubricating oil some petroleum products next and more thing minerals or natural resource take thousands of years to make and we cannot be replenished in short time if we don't use them properly they will extracted well soon dear students conserve natural resources next one is conserve natural resources the earth has enough for everybody's need but not enough for everybody's greed 
said Mahatma Gandhi. I will repeat once again. The earth has enough for everybody. Need but. But not enough for everybody's green, said Mahatma Gandhi. We must conserve natural resources to save fuel at home. We must keep our stores and machines in good condition. To save fuel at home, we must keep our stores and machines in good condition. We should use coal and oil very carefully and wisely. We should also use an extractable source of energy like the sun, wind and water. We should use coal and oil very carefully and wisely. We should also use inextricable source of energy like the sun, wind and water. Mineral deposits in the earth are limited. They should not be used carefully or wasted while mining. So, we must use minerals. Deposits in the earth are limited. They should not be used carelessly or wasted while mining. So, we must use natural resource very carefully. Dear students, we have completed topic of minerals. Now, we will continue next chapter, fourth lesson, the soil erosion and conservation. Dear students, so, students, now we have completed the chapter Rocks and Minerals. I hope all of you understand in this lesson Rocks and Minerals. Next, we are going to the fourth chapter Soil Erosion and Conservation. Dear students, Dear students, today we are learn about what is the soil and the importance of soil and soil formation and soil erosion. Now, first one is, what is the soil? Soil is the uppermost layer of the earth. It supports plants which provide food to all living things on this planet. Thus, soil is the foundation of all life on earth. Below the soil, there is solid rock. Soil is the uppermost layer of the earth. It is called soil. It is made up of broken down rocks, remains of dead plants and animals, water, air and some tiny living things, organisms like bacteria. All the plants grow in the soil. Importance of soil. Plants use the nutrients in the soil to grow and make their own food. All the animals depend directly or indirectly plants on the plants for the food. The soil is very very important for life. Many animals also live in the soil like rabbits, ants, earthworms. They make them their own in the soil and live there. Soil also. Uh, dear students, do you know that we use the products of soil to build our houses? Also for example cement, bricks and gravels etc. Yes, cement is also a type of soil. Next one is soil formation. How is soil formation? Dear students, dear students, formation of soil. Dear students, once again I will repeat it. Soil, the soil that you see around here has rock particles in the form of sand, silt, clay and pebbles. Soil also has a tiny living things and humus. Humus is formed from the remains of plants and animals. It makes the soil fertile. Humus retains water and keeps the soil wet for a long time. Long ago, there was no soil on the earth. Let us learn how soil has formed. Formation of soil. In the beginning, the entire earth was covered with rocks. Heat from the sun heated the earth and rain cool it. As a result, the rocky surface cracked. The wind and flowing water winded the cracks. With the time, the rocks broke into small pieces. Gradually, the rocks formed into pebbles, sand, silt and clay. Later plants appeared are land and their remains mixed with the soil. This is how fertile soil is formed. Dear students, when the earth formation, when the earth was 
formed there were only water air and hard rocks the sun heated the rocks the rain made them cold and the wind blew over them this continued for thousands of years as a result the rocks broke into small pieces these small pieces broke into still smaller pieces they were carried around by wind and water they rubbed against each other till they became tiny particles it took millions of years for these tiny particles to change into the loose material which we call soil next one is soil erosion dear students dear students next one is soil erosion do you know how much time it take to form a small account of soil yes it takes millions of years to form a land full full of soil now let us see what is as the soil forms it is settled down in the layers on the top most layer of the soil is known as top soil this top soil as the humus and it is the most fertile layer of the soil what is humus a humus is the organic component of the soil which is formed by the decomposition of leaves and other plant material so it is most fertile layer which is the plant grow sometimes the top soil carried away by the wind or water to the different places this remove the fertile portion of the soil and hence the land becomes barren this barren land is unfit forming dear student soil erosion what is soil erosion natural forces like wind rain and running water help in soil formation but they can harm the soil as well at places covered by natural vegetation there is a balance between the formation of soil and the loss of soil often this balance is disturbed by human or natural forces then the top soil is removed from the surface of the earth the condition of varying of or carry away soil by the action of water or wind is known as soil erosion dear students did you understand what is soil erosion what is soil erosion the condition of varying of or carrying away of soil by the action of water or wind is known as soil erosion as a result of soil erosion the land loses its fertility the land loses its fertility a land affected by soil erosion cannot produce enough to feed all the living beings who dwell on it farmers reap poor harvest we should therefore know the agents responsible for soil erosion and try to stop or control their actions dear students i hope in this class all of you understand we will meet next class thank you